Now let's talk a little bit about the Do and the Do language. You have your Do bleats, um, you have something that's called a, a, a Do grunt, and then of course you have your estrus bleats. And so those are the three basic things. I don't do a lot of Do calling, but it's really necessary to, to understand it and to be able to use it to your advantage. And, and we'll get into that, but well, let's start out with the actual Do bleat itself, okay? Once again, there's different variations the way you can do it, and all you're doing is saying emotionally something in a different way. So if a doe is, say they're in a group, okay? And they're just kind of, once again, talking back and forth to each other, letting each other know they're there, or maybe trying to communicate with a different deer uh, that they know who it is. Um, they'll do like just a basic bleat. Well, it'll be kind of a, not a lot different than the, the fawn bleat, but it's the deeper pitch and it sounds more like a doe, okay? Now, there is a pecking order when it comes to deer, especially when they're in, in the different groups. And when it comes to the females, you have what we would call that boss doe or, or the leader of the pack or the alpha doe or whatever you want to call it, but she's kind of in charge. And sometimes if they're in a group, she'll do something that's a little bit more emotional, a little more aggressive to kind of, you know, position herself as the dominant female in the group. And that would be another doe bleat that would be just adding a little bit of emotion to it and will change the inflection instead of going, Arr. It'll just be something a little bit more emotional. It's not real long, it's still short, but it's adding that emotion by changing that pitch and opening up. And then, of course, you're going to naturally increase the volume because you're throwing the emotion in there. Remember, Deer are not loud animals, okay? You can't hear one at 200 yards away, and especially on a windy day. So why would you want to sound like a deer that's 10 times louder? So you have to really get your, your, your volumes, your tone, and your air pressure down when it comes to communicating with deer. Making a sound like a deer in a, in a high volume is kind of the thing that's been killing most people who, who try and call the deer. It's been happening since deer, deer calling started. And so that, that's one of the worst things that you can do. Be natural when you're increasing your volume, don't overdo it. It'd be like me screaming at you 10 times louder than normal saying, what are you doing today? You know, it just doesn't make sense and they don't react well to it. So remember, volume is very important. Put it this way, you call to a deer, they pop their head up and they're looking at you and you think, oh, they heard me, that, that worked. And then they take off or they leave or they fade away. You just blew them out of there. You were just too loud, okay? And you said the wrong thing. And there's a lot more we can get into when it gets to that. So let's get back to the, the doe bleat. So we had the kind of locator type bleat. Then we had the kind of the dominant doe bleat. And now let's get a little bit into the estrus bleat. Now this is a time when they're very agitated. They're going into estrus and they're letting the bucks know that they're ready or they're just kind of letting the other does in the area who are in competition, think about this now, their competition, hey, this is my time, you know, I'm not in the mood to be hanging out with you. So it sounds a little bit like this. It's kind of a... It's a long, elongated out deal. It's, it, it can be a little bit shorter or it can be a little bit longer. It can have a lower variation. It can have even kind of a quiver to it. And so you can play it different ways, but it's that time of the year when you know the does are starting to go into estrus and they'll start to make this sound. So I'm gonna give you a few variations the way that you might be able to use this out in the, your hunting scenario. <laughs> Did you hear that quiver? All I did was just kind of go <laughs> with my voice and kind of wiggle the call a little bit to get a little bit of quiver in there. I'll do that again. It just gives it a little quiver. I'm kind of quivering my lips and my, my breath and I'm kind of shaking the call a little bit. 
And that's, uh, I mean, she's really in heat when you're hearing stuff like that. Now, and you can shorten it up, you can lengthen it a little bit, but that's all pure emotion. Uh, I'll never forget the time that I heard it in real life. It was when I was first designing the call in that testing stages. And I'm sitting in my tree stand and probably about 40 to 60 yards off in this uh, pine patch, I heard a call. I'm like, oh man. I, I thought the neighbor was over there sitting in his tree stand. There was a tree stand not too far from that area. And I thought he had bought one of my calls. And I thought, oh, there he is. That blew my hunt because it's the wrong wind direction. And all of a sudden this big old doe popped out of there. I'm like, holy smokes. That sounded exactly like what the call did. And the variation that she did is it was one that I did a lot of. So once again, creating that illusion, controlling your volume, controlling your pitch, that makes all the difference in the world. Okay, so let's just go through these variations once again. Let's go through a locator. Short, get something a little more emotional, a little more dominant though. Maybe we're getting into the rut now and it's more of the uh, estrus bleats. I don't quiver all the time, but I like to. It just kind of adds a little bit of realness to it. So those are some different ways that you can do the sounds of the doe bleats. Now, how's that going to work for you? All right, once again, let's go back to it's getting a little later in the season. Okay. And now the, the fawns are getting older. So you got young does, you got older does. They're starting to group up. They're starting to go out and they're feeding in certain different areas and locations. They're becoming a little more tolerable with each other. It's getting close to where the young bucks are chasing and stuff like that. And so you can create that community calling by using those non-aggressive doe bleats and those scenarios that they might be doing when they're with each other out in the group and they're staging, they're getting ready. If you got a buck bedded down back in the timber, they, they're gonna come out last most likely. Let them know, hey, this is where you wanna come. This is the assembly area, okay? Now, with the estrus bleats, obviously when bucks are cruising and things are happening and these does are starting to come into estrus, the estrus bleat can just work phenomenal. You do one of those and boom, they, a buck could come running in. One scenario that we use a lot of doe bleats with is where bucks are just starting to cruise in the pre-rut and they're getting aggressive, they're fighting, they're doing things. And I'll see him and I try and do a locator buck run to just try and stop him in case he's mad or wants to see who's over there. If that doesn't stop him and he's on a mission, I'll just immediately switch out to a doe bleat. Because a lot of times you don't realize it. Just because a deer doesn't react to the sound doesn't mean they don't hear it, okay? And if it is crunchy leaves and this and that, and I try to do a buck run and I can't get the attention of the deer, the doe bleat actually can become a little bit louder and a little more emotional without startling the deer, okay? Instead of trying to throw a real loud, super loud buck grunt, it's a lot tougher to do that. It's a lot easier to catch their attention with a little more uh, emotional doe bleat. So those are some ways that you can use your doe bleats for cruising bucks. And then obviously just communicating directly with a buck in real time, in real sight. And there's just lots of ways to utilize the doe bleat. And it's a very, very important part and a very, underutilized part of whitetail language when it comes to trying to manipulate the deer and what you want them to do.